Hey folks, Tony here. Were you darn glad to be? We're in the little town of what they call Rocky Top. That was formerly Lake City, and before that it was called Cold Creek in the days of my grandparents. But when I grew up here, this particular town was called Lake City, and that all came in effect in, in the year of uh, 1933 when the TVA seen fit to build a dam in this area and uh, the lake kind of come in and I guess they kind of related the lake <laughs> with the TV and the dam, uh, TVA and the dam and they decided to call it uh, Lake City anyway and uh, anyway that said this is Highway 116 there's a lot of history here on this route and th this area here leads up to what they call Fraytersville and uh, back in 1902 there was a horrible mining disaster that occurred here in which over 200 men and young boys as young as 12 and 14 years old perished in the coal mines due to a methane explosion but anyway back in that day and time when you got old enough to get out and was able to do any kind of work at all you had to go to work in the mines to help support your family and the families relied on the coal company they owed their whole existence to coal companies they had to live in company houses and, and buy from the company stores and use what medical facilities they had available which is very few they everything they owed their whole life to the company stores back in the end. And we're getting close to the area up here. This is what what we call Freighterville or Freightersville. Anyway, this is where one of the uh, horrific mining disasters occurred. It's not too far up here. Uh, and like I said, over 200 fatalities. And this was a way of life. And this little body of water here is it's called Cold Creek. I'm going to make a little stop here. Somebody behind me wanted to go faster than what I wanted to go. And anyway, this is here's some mementos here that the Cold Creek watershed seems fit to put in place. Gives you a little information on the, the area and things that happened here. Now we're going to get right back on track here. Right back on 116 out of Rocky Top, like I said, which is once Lake City, and before that it was called Cold Creek. That's back in the day when the mining disasters occurred. It was called Cold Creek at that time. Okay, we're crossing Cold Creek right now, the little bridge crossing Cold Creek. And there were a lot of company houses here along this area at that time uh, where the miners lived. And right up here, on the right, just a little ways up here to my right over here, that's where the Fraytersville mine was, right over in this direction here. And uh, that's where the disaster happened at. And like I said, this place was uh, uh, full of company houses at that time. And there's the railroad uh, that ran through this area. The, I believe it was a southern at that time where they hauled coal out. And just right on up here is the Fraytersville Baptist Church. Right here we are. Anyway, there's a lot of history right here in this area off of 116 regarding the Fraytersville mine explosion. And I was born and raised up here at this little place we're getting ready to come into. Uh, just up the road here, a little place called Bryceville. And uh, there was also some mining history up here too. There was a, another horrific mining explosion that occurred up here in 1911, the Cross Mountain Mines. And I was born and raised within a mile of where that happened, and I'll show you more as we go on. We're moving right along up 116. right along 
anyway, we're getting ready to enter into the little community of Bryceville. And there was also company houses down in this part of the community too, back in the day. There's very few of the old company houses still in existence, by the way. Anyway, we're entering the community of Bryceville right now. And off to my left is Cold Creek, the little body of water that runs through. There were a lot of company houses right here in this particular area that sat on the banks of Cold Creek, but uh, there's none of them left. They've all been demolished and torn away. A lot of people have moved in double wides and single wides. And that's what they do here in Appalachia. They they get those double wide homes and single wide, and they live the life of Riley, which is good. And they do have a convenience center where you can dump your trash here. Back when I was growing up, most people throw the trash over the bank, and that was real bad. But they did anyway. I'm gonna pull off the road. I got another another vehicle that's uh, wanting to go faster than what I'm going. But right here on the hill. Right here to my right is the Old Mother Church, the Old Methodist Church. It was built by the, the Welch that moved. There was a lot of people from well, Wales and Scotland and Ireland and England and Germany, different places, come to work here in the mines. And this is the little town of Bryceville. Straight ahead is the Bryceville elementary school. Now th this school was built in 63 or 65. I went to school on those grounds but they had the old school buildings up and running at that time. They're gone of course and they've seen fit to build a new school. And there used to be the company store right here on my right, one of the company stores. Now we're going up what they call Slate Stone. We're heading toward the area where the Cross Mountain, Cross Mountain Mines blew up. Up on the hill here above the Bryceville Church of God, this is where I was born and raised to my right up here. I grew up, left here when I was in the fifth grade, and we moved to Louisville, Kentucky. Dad took a job up there, and we moved up there. And I came back and years later to live with my grandmother until she passed. Right here on my right, there used to be a co company spring. That's where people would come, and, not a spring, but a well. They'd come and pump their water for drinking and laundry and stuff like that. Now that mountain you see directly in front of me, that's the Cross Mountain. And like I say, 1911, December of 1911, 84 men and young boys, some as young as 12 years old, perished in the Cross Mountain mines. And this is both sides of this road here were dotted with company houses. That's where the miners live, it's right on both sides of the road. And of course there's the old railroad, abandoned railroad track over there too. And they used to use mules to pull out the coal from the cars, where the cars, coal cars, and they used the mules to pull, pull the coal out. And uh, it was very primitive back then. The mining companies have really advanced as far as technology and modern equipment, but they're still dangerous as all hell, I mean tell you. <laughs> right up here is uh, a coal washer, and this was in existence for many years. That's where they bring the coal for it to be washed. I had a friend that worked here, matter of fact, and now right ahead of me up here is where the mine, uh, just directly up here, off to my left a little bit, is where Cross Mountain Mines, and, and uh, where this horrible, disaster occurred that take 84 lives and actually five men survived that they found a room that the, the bad guys hadn't got to and they barricaded themselves in until the rescue people could get there it happened on a Saturday 
and on Monday morning the rescue units came in and they were trying to see what they could do and who they could save and there was five men left alive because they got into a pocket and they barricaded herself in and they didn't have to suffocate from the bad air anyway they survived it and directly in front of me this back in the 50s was an Air Force United States Air Force and on top of the mountain there was a radar they had radar uh, emplacements up there and that's back in the time they were threatened by attack from Russia and other places anyway they seemed fit to build a radar unit up there on top of Cross Mountain and right here to my left there's a subdivision up there that the Air Force built and there's still people that lives up there Anyway, this is Slate Stone Hollow, the scene of the Cross Mountain Mine disaster. A lot of history here in East Tennessee. Hope you've enjoyed my little video here today. And I hope I've been able to shed a little bit of light on the area and its people and everything, that, you know, to serve it some kind of justice and kind of educate people. A lot of history, a lot of history. And I've went over over this the best I can since I'm driving and my sweetheart's doing the camera work but anyway this is a still a beautiful area a lot of changes has gone taking place through the years but a lot of coal mining history a lot of good people and there's still a lot of good people that lives in this area God bless y'all I'll catch you later hope you've enjoyed my little motor tour here today Fredersville Mine Cross Mountain Mine Briceville, Tennessee, Fredersville, Tennessee. Catch you later. Bye.